Have you ever left a movie theater thinking, wow, this was a great movie, and yet the friend you were with had a completely different opinion, thought it was a terrible movie? How could that be? You two just sat next to each other and watched the same movie, but you came up with completely different opinions. Well, that's what we're going to try to answer today as we look at discovering our realities. And a couple of concepts you need to remember right away. The first is an environment, and the second, reality. The environment is what we all see, what we all experience, like the movie that you saw together is the environment. But reality is what's created in your brain. Reality is your opinion or your interpretation of what the environment was. So we start with the environment and we create a reality. And we do that by using the process of perception. So let's take a look at that process of perception right now and, and try to get a better understanding of how this happens, how we can go from the environment to a reality. The process of perception has three stages. The first stage, select. The second stage, sort. And the third stage, interpret. And first off, what we need, of course, is something to focus on. We'll call that our environment. And in this case, we've come across this accident scene, and that's the environment. And anybody around us will see the same thing. Now, from that, we get a variety of what we call cognitions, and those are the smallest things that we can perceive or be aware of. We may get it from the background. We may get it from some of the bystanders, of what they're seeing. And as we go through this, all of these are different cognitions that we have. And so we have a myriad of cognitions from all different aspects of that environment. And what we need next is a filter to filter them out. Why? Because we can't see all of them at once. It's called cognitive overload. We only can focus in on a few of them. So we filter out some and say and and uh, and keep the others to, to begin to interpret even more with later on. So through the filter process, some of them will come through and some of them will be filtered out. Now, these filters can be made up of everything from uh, uh, our education, our religious beliefs, our physiological mood that we're in. In other words, if we're hungry, we're going to really notice food and uh, food advertisements. Uh, it might be our psychological mood. If we're depressed, we see the world one way. If we're not depressed, we see the world another way. So all of these filters begin to affect which cognitions emerge and which ones don't. And when they emerge, we use our experience to sort them or organize them into importance. That top one's not quite as important as the second one and so on. So now we organize them as in order of which ones are more important than others. If someone's approaching me with a knife, I'll probably focus on the cognition of the knife before anything else. That'll be my most important one, and that's what I'll sort to the top. After we've done this, we then take those cognitions and interpret them. In other words, we relate those cognitions to past experiences that we've had. And so we can interpret this situation as being tragic. We can interpret it as there was a crazy driver or there was a biker mistake. Or look at those how great those first responders are doing. All these interpretations we put together and that creates our reality. So remember, process of perception starts with environment and moves over to a reality. And a couple of things to remember. Your reality is not real. Your reality is an illusion. Reality is not real. It's an illusion. It's this illusion that we've created in our head of that environment. We argue our illusions. We don't argue the environment. We argue our illusions. In other words, if we're arguing over the President Obama, we're not arguing over him. We're arguing our realities of President Obama. So let's take a look at some concepts, just to kind of remind you now. Remember, reality is created in the mind. It is shaped by our experiences. Reality is not real. It's what we think is real. It's that illusion. One's reality is their truth about the situation. When we say, my truth is something, that's our reality of that situation. And we make decisions based on our reality. We don't make them based on the environment. If we make a decision about buying a car, we don't make it on the car. We make it based on the reality of that car. A couple other things to remember that no two realities are identical. You and I go see a movie. We're each going to have a slightly different reality of that movie. And arguments occur because people have a difference in reality. 
Now, arguing should be used to test our reality because we really want to create an accurate reality, but usually we argue to try to convince someone else that our reality is the accurate reality, the correct reality. Our goal should be, though, to create the most valid reality. Now, the non-critical thinker uses the perception process by he creates a reality that is consistent with previously held beliefs and expectations. In other words, he believes something is going on or something's the way it is, and so he sees the world through that uh, filter, that prism. In other words, the perception process is used not to discover what is really happening, but to maintain stasis. Now, the critical thinker does it, uses the perception process different. They use it to create a reality that can challenge their previously held beliefs and expectations, not just support them. In other words, the perception process is used to create a more accurate reality that may lead to a new, that's right, stasis. So finally, just remember, in the perception process, don't let stasis create, create your reality. Use your reality to create your stasis. And that gives you an idea of the perception process and how we use it in decision-making and argumentation.